Hey everybody, welcome back to World History with Mr. Finn. Today we are looking at what happens after the Vikings have attacked and disrupted the idea of empire building, which is large scale, uh, you know, empires or civilizations that cover large areas and have like almost a centralized government or like one person in charge who, co who governs like a whole big area. Uh, the Vikings came through uh, as well as the Muslims and the Magyars and kind of broke up the idea of, you know, a larger scale civilization uh, because people were scared. People would attack. Uh, if you have a huge empire, what happens if someone's attacking way out there? How do you get there to defend those people? How do you defend those people on this side? How do you defend those people down there? It's hard when you have a large area of land that you are in charge of. And so, as these invaders have been attacking from the 800s to around the year 1000, like we looked at last class, a new system of social order and government takes place. Uh, and this system is going to be called feudalism. So I will write the definition here for you. It's a, it's both a social and political system. And we use the term social because it's actually going to not just, it's not like a form of government, it's not like democracy, and then it explains just the government, but social means within feudalism, it basically tells everyone how to act, what their position in life is, uh, what their role in society is. So it's both a social and a political system that comes out of necessity, really. All these invaders come through, you don't have this, you know, person to look to. You have your local, meaning the people around you, lords and friends and everything. That's who defends you, that's who protects you. And so we start to see very small kingdoms. So that's the idea of feudalism, is that you're going to have uh, this system where there's going to be one person who's in charge, but it's going to be on a much smaller level. And that person's job is to help protect the people who are around them, and the people who are around them, it's their job to basically prop up that person. And that person is going to be called a lord. And the person who is the lord is actually, this is the important part to understand, a lord is the person who owns the land around the area. So uh, this is the land owner. All right. So lords could have a small amount of land that they own. Lords could have a huge amount of land that they own. Uh, it de all depends on, there was just a lot of different, you know, sizes of these plots of land or these small kingdoms. So these lords would own land and it would be their job to protect the people on their land. The people on their land uh, would, be giving, would be given part of the Lord's land to live on and grow crops and do certain things, but that person would have to give part of the crops to the Lord. They would have to uh, you know, swear a, an oath of loyalty to the Lord. They would have to fight on behalf of the Lord. So say the Lord was like, hey, I have this land, but I want to have this much land. But in order to have a little bit more, I have to attack that lord over there. So I need all of my people to come together, and we're going to go attack that lord. And if we win, then we get his kingdom, and we have more land, and then that would grow the lord's uh, power. So the person who would work uh, for the lord, or would be given land, or part of the land, to live on and do those things was called a vassal. Uh, so this vassal would be, this is the land or, uh, owner, this is the uh, person given land. So they would be given a part of the Lord's uh, kingdom to live on and do stuff, and they would be loyal to that lord. Now, this lord could have more than one vassal. Vassal, I mean, there could be a number of vassals, and this is where this political and social system uh, takes place. Uh, let's just, I'll, I'll dive into that real quick here. Just put an L for the top lord. The top lord is an L up here. He has a huge plot of land, and he gives it out to 
this person, this person, and that person, and this person. So you have a vassal here, a vassal here, a vassal here, and a vassal here. So that Lord has four vassals that are all loyal to him. However, those are big pieces of land. The Lord's like, dude, I just gave you a lot of land. So that vassal could then say, I'm going to split up part of my land. And I'm going to have one, two, and three. So these are going to be this person's vassal. This person becomes a vassal of this person, but also slash a lord himself. Because he's the landowner and he gives... Uh, part of the part of his land to these three people who become three more vassals. So those vassals owe loyalty to this lord. This lo lord, uh, who is also a vassal, owes loyalty to the the top guy. And this becomes a very complicated system of different titles and who you owe allegiance to, who you, who you swear oaths to, who's in charge. All of those things um, become very confusing because think about it. These people all do the same thing. These people do the same thing. This person does the same thing. All of a sudden, you have vassals here, vassals here, vassals here, vassals. But then they, these vassals could split it up even more. So it goes on and on and on, um, all the way down to the lowest level, which is going to be like peasants or the people who work the farmland for these these people. Now, the 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 fighting aspect of this is going to be the knights. The knights. Uh, are really are going to be armored. It's really armored. I was going to put horsemen, but the actual term is cavalry. Cavalry, uh, cavalry is means a uh, like an armored horseman. <laughs> I mean, cavalry actually just means a horseman. It doesn't need to be armored, but it's part of the military. The people that ride on horses are the cavalry. Um, and these are what knights are. Knights would be the ones who would carry out the fighting uh, on behalf of uh, the lords. They would be vassals themselves in some cases. They would be, you know, in charge of providing their own armor and things like that. But they would be pretty high up uh, in the ranks of people. Uh, and then again, at the end, you are going to have everyday people or peasants. Peasants are, again, landless. They don't own any land. They just work the land. They would be, it would be a hard life. It would be, I mean, you wouldn't want to be a peasant because a peasant would be someone um, who just literally worked for a, a lord. It would be, and not for a lord, but one of the vassals. I mean, you wouldn't even have a lord, really. You would just be, you know, just work for your, like, master of your area. Um, and it would be a backbreaking because it was all hard labor. Uh, and agriculture work and physical labor, like it was, it would be a tough life. Like the life expectancy, especially in this time period, as we know, with lack of education and medicine and all that stuff, was not very long. And their life expectancy was even less. So, all in all, what I'm talking about today is this feudalism or this feudalistic society uh, in which people are now trying to figure out hey, we gotta protect ourselves. And how are we gonna protect ourselves? Well, if I have a lot of land, I'm going to give it to some. They're going to be loyal to me. And they're just going to work on a much smaller scale. So if someone came to attack these guys, they would have their own defenses. They would be responsible for themselves. They would not have to like look to a larger king or a larger uh, government or anything to protect them. They would protect themselves. And eventually what we're going to see is these top lords are going to become nobles and kings themselves. Uh, and they're going to have these kingdoms, and we'll get to all of that uh, in the future. But this feudalism, you know, order is going to turn into or morph into uh, the idea of like kings and queens and nobility and um, what we think of when we think of like the Middle Ages and castles and all of that stuff. Um, but this is how we, you know, solve the problem of invaders coming, large empires. No one's here to save me. What do we do? Well, we turn to this basic form of a government of feudalism where we protect ourselves in our small area, in our small towns, and this is how it works. Uh, hey, it's quiz today. So get a piece of paper or on your notes and write one through five. And let's do a quick quiz. We've been going over a lot of stuff. And one. 
two, three, four, five. Let's begin, shall we, since it's on, on uh, YouTube. Let's not go back far. Let's start here. This person, this is going to be recent. Ready? This person is the head of the Catholic Church. He is the person who is in charge at this time of all of Christianity. This person is the person in charge or the head of the Catholic Church. That is number one. Who is the head of the Catholic Church? Oh, we got to go way back. Sorry. Not way back. But back to this. Ooh. You know what? I don't know if I asked this one. I don't know if I wrote it down. So I'm not going to ask it because I don't. I want to be sure. But I know, I know, I know I did this one. In the chapter on Islam, we talked about uh, Islamic society. And one of the things was an open uh, air but a covered marketplace in the Islamic world was called a what for number two? A covered a covered marketplace. It would be out in the open, but it would be covered because it was sunny. Covered marketplace. Um, oh, there's another one. Uh, staying in, uh, staying in the Muslim or Islamic chapter. Number three is who was Muhammad's wife? Who was Muhammad's wife for number three? If you remember, she actually encouraged him to get out there and tell everyone that he was getting visions and messages from Allah or God. What was her name? What was her name? Uh, I feel like I asked this one already, so I'm going to go back to one that I have not asked. Let's go. I always fall on the same ones. I don't know why that happens. So I want to. I do want to mix it up so it's not, you know, too easy. I'm looking for a term here. Looking for a term. I got one. Actually, I think I might have actually just talked about him the other day. I don't remember why. Number four, what was uh, the other name for Octavian? Octavian was in the second triumvirate of Rome. He becomes an emperor, and he gets a new name. What was his name for number four? What was... Oh, I almost said it. I almost gave you the answer. Octavian's new name, what was it? Uh, last one. Let's go... Just flip this way back. Way back... We're in India, going way back to India. All right, let's do this. I gave you two rivers in uh, India. There are two major rivers in India. You just got to give me one. Number five, the chapter on India. Uh, when we started talking about monsoons and the Himalayas and part of the geography of India, I told you about two rivers in India. Give me one of those two rivers. And that's the news. So make sure you give me this. Show me your notes and your quiz for today for attendance and, uh, attendance and participation purposes. And I will see you next class.